We have uh, yet another question. Hello, I'm David Moyer, and I'm 12 years old from Olinton, Maryland, and my question is, how long will this crab stay on Mars? <laughs> Forever. <laughs> this is a monument to man's ingenuity to place a spacecraft on the surface and of women. Mars. And women. Oh, very good. <laughs> and humankind. <laughs> Excuse you. me. I get, that, I get that question a lot from school uh, children, and they ask, uh, you know, when is it coming back? And I say, well, maybe someday, if you study hard and you'll become an astronaut, maybe, and in the future, you get to go and bring Sojourner back. Who knows? Well, how long? Will I, one of the questions we always hear, though, is how long will it continue to work, to sure. function? Well, there's, there's right now the way the spacecraft is performed now, it looks like it could go on forever. But realistically, eventually, as things get colder. Uh, eventually the, the lander and the rover will, will stop functioning. But it could be weeks, it could be months. But uh, as long as it's running, we'll, we'll keep operating. Years. But <laughs> anything, anything we get from this point is gravy because we have fulfilled all the mission objectives already. And uh, so everything now is just uh, add an, ad added attraction. Ah, but we have not fulfilled the project scientist dreams yet. <laughs> ah, well, but those are That's never why to we be went. fulfilled. Oh, no, 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 we need a year on the surface with this little beastie. <laughs> I was going to say all of the objectives completed within a week, right. except for, of except course, for Matthew. Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> but he, you can't satisfy we him. Can't. <laughs> By the way, we should tell people that in 2005, we're tr going to try to launch a mission that's going to bring a piece of Mars back to Earth in 2008. So the first thing that comes back will be the 2005 launched mission. This has been wonderful. I, I have to tell you, part of this mission is about introducing kids to a whole new world, but not just the world of Mars, the wonders of science. And scientific achievement can begin at a very early age. And who better to tell us about that than Donna Shirley now and Donna Shirley then? Oh, no. Who knew this Oklahoma school girl would one day grow up to be the program manager of a mission to Mars? Well, maybe one of her teachers had a glimmer. <laughs> Well, I, I told several of them the sky's the limit if that's where you want to go, you know. And she did. <laughs> she did, that's right. She did. Mm -hmm. She really did. Yes, I, we had great athletes and great students and went in all fields, but none could top this one, I don't believe. She's, she's great. Well... <laughs> what more do we say? This has been wonderful sitting here and chatting with all these folks, John, and, and uh, they are really, really have made it a wonderful week for us out here, accessible all the time and explaining it in English so you and I can understand it and present it to the rest of the folks around the world. John? No kidding, John. Hey, I know that you guys in Pasadena have the 3D glasses. I've got some. Get them ready. They'll give you a glimpse of what it's like to gaze toward the horizon of a new and different world. That is just ahead. Stay with us. Welcome back. Every day, we have been scrambling for superlatives to describe what the Mars Pathfinder has been showing us. This little spacecraft just keeps topping itself. Well, today's no different. Scientists have assembled Pathfinder images into a three-dimensional panorama. So put on your special 3D glasses. I had no idea this would work, but it does. Take a look at this. We'll watch together. Now, you see the rover, Sojourner, right there on the left of your screen. And uh, this was before she went over to the rock Yogi Bear, which you see just moving off the left side of your screen right now. Um, at the bottom of your screen, you can see one of the Pathfinder solar panels sticking out, along with the airbags. And if you have these 3D glasses, I mean, you can really see that the airbags are rising up off the surface of Mars. And as you look out onto the horizon, in a minute, you'll be able to see some of these mountains in the distance, and some of the, uh, the twin peaks may come across. There's one of the mountains in the distance, just coming on the upper right-hand corner of your screen. These are the things that uh, the Pathfinder mission didn't know it was going to find. Now, coming uh, into view in about the center of your screen now, out about halfway back, you can see uh, what they call an arroyo. It's sort of like a stream bed where the land has gone down because of the water washing across it. And at the bottom of your screen, you can see the ramp that uh, the rover was able to get off of to begin its journey around the surface of Mars. 
Uh, there are the Twin Peaks now, just beginning to come across your screen from, uh, from right to left. And um, as I say, I had no idea this was going to work on, uh, on television. We knew that if you got in the room with this picture, you could see it. But the fact is, if you have these 3D glasses with the red and blue thing on them, you can really see this. All right, I think we're back to the rover now, back to Yogi Bear. And uh, as I say, those 3D images almost make the photographs that have been wowing us for a week look commonplace. Pathfinder is dominating the newsstands and the airwaves with newspaper spreads, magazine covers, and programs like this. CNN's Jill Brooke shows us the Martian media invasion. Some say the journalists are always looking for dirt. Well, now they've found plenty of it on Mars. The story of the Pathfinder landing on Mars has turned into pay dirt for the media. The sci-fi channel's ratings have soared. Science has now taken center stage. As well as CNN's and others. Magazines and newspapers have Mars mania. And NASA's Mars website had more hits than Madonna. A record million people have logged on. Mars has been a bonanza for the media because of this fascination with what could be there and the fact that we're actually there. And for a while we were kind of looking inward to ourselves and nostalgia, but this is a time with the millennium coming where we're very interested in what the future will be. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. Not since Neil Armstrong stepped onto the lunar landscape has the world been so over the moon about space. The Mars mission provided no pictures of astronauts walking and talking in space, but in some ways it is more of a giant media leap. There are far more news outlets to provide coverage. Plus, interest in the Mars mission is heightened because of its symbolism in pop culture. We use the word Mars so much, that's Martians, you know, that's, that's what we've always used in our, in our um, sort of the mythology we've created about outer space. We are sci-fi junkies in this culture, and this is the real thing, and everybody is hoping that some little person is going to run out and wave at the camera. I mean, everybody wants to believe that there's life on other planets. Mars is more than 140 million miles from the sun. Mars was put on the cultural map with War of the Worlds. And since then, entertainment vehicles ranging from Total Recall to My Favorite Martian to Mars Attacks have used this planet to project our fantasies and fears about alien life. <laughs> Meanwhile, a news stories can impact the entertainment industry also. Some video stores report a surge in sales for space-related films. Thanks to film, here's what we were expecting from Mars. And here's what we got. But no one seems disappointed especially the media. Chilbrook, CNN, New York. The scientists on the Mars mission really have rocks in their heads or make that on their minds. When we come back, this the fine art of naming rocks. Stay with us. Okay.